Imagine an aircraft carrier-sized floating fish farm that sails the ocean, cruises to the best waters, and grows 8,000 tons of seafood every year, all inside giant onboard tanks. That's not sci-fi. Earlier this year, Chinese media reported the launch of a mobile aquaculture vessel, widely described as a deep-sea breeding aircraft carrier. It's been called Zhangjiang Bay No. 1, sometimes transliterated differently in English reports, and the coverage says it holds roughly 80,000 cubic meters of aquaculture water, about the volume of 32 Olympic swimming pools, inside multiple breeding cabins. Why start here? Because a single image, a ship that looks like a warship but farms fish, flips how most people picture seafood production. Instead of pens near the coast or ponds on land, imagine a floating factory that can steer to colder, cleaner, or more sheltered waters when it needs to. That visual is the hook, big, strange, and immediate. It asks the audience to wonder whether this is an engineering marvel, a food security gamble, or both. We'll unpack how it works and what it means next. China's decision to build something as unusual as a floating fish farming ship makes a lot more sense when you look at the country's enormous appetite for food, especially seafood. With a population of around 1.4 billion people, China eats on a scale that's hard to imagine. Every year, the country consumes over 800 million tons of grain, roughly one-third of the world's total. Its annual meat consumption is staggering, too. About 7 billion chickens, 700 million pigs, 50 million cattle, and 400 million sheep. And seafood? The numbers are just as mind-bending. China has been the world's largest producer of aquatic products for more than 30 years, providing over a quarter of the global total. In 2023 alone, Chinese fisheries produced around 91 million tons of aquatic products, more than the combined total of most continents. As incomes rise, people are also demanding better tasting, cleaner, and more diverse seafood, from salmon and cod to delicate yellow croaker. But feeding such a massive demand has limits. Coastal fish farms are already crowded, polluted, and vulnerable to storms or red tides. Fishing further out to sea is costly and risky, and wild fish stocks are shrinking worldwide. China, like many other countries, faces a paradox. People want more seafood, but the ocean can't simply give more without breaking. This growing pressure is what pushed Chinese scientists and engineers to ask an audacious question. What if the ocean itself could become a mobile farm, one that goes where conditions are best, instead of staying in one place? That bold question, can we farm fish on a moving ship? first surfaced in China around 2018. At the time, it sounded almost ridiculous. Ships are for catching fish, not raising them. Critics laughed at the idea, saying it would be impossible to control water quality, feed the fish, or manage such a complex system in the open sea. After all, even traditional offshore fish cages, anchored near the coast, struggle with waves, disease, and maintenance. But Chinese researchers didn't let the skepticism stop them. They imagined a vessel that could act like a floating farm. Part ship, part factory, part science lab. It would use automation and smart sensors to create a stable environment for fish inside large seawater tanks, all powered by onboard energy systems. If one ocean area became too warm or polluted, the ship could simply sail to another, cleaner region. Over the next few years, the concept quietly evolved from a rough sketch to a serious engineering project. Designers, shipbuilders, and marine biologists worked together to figure out how to merge aquaculture with advanced naval architecture. They developed systems to filter and recycle seawater, stabilize the ship during storms, and feed thousands of fish automatically. By 2025, the once impossible dream became real. News broke that China had successfully launched the Zhangjiang Bay No. 1, the world's first floating global cage-type aquaculture workboat. It was no small prototype. This massive ship measured 154 meters long and 44 meters wide, roughly the size of an aircraft carrier. 
With that launch, what began as a far-fetched idea officially turned into a working piece of technology, ready to change how we think about fish farming. Let's step aboard the John Jang Bay No. 1, the world's first floating aquaculture ship, a machine designed to turn the ocean itself into a sustainable food factory. At first glance, it looks like a small aircraft carrier. But instead of fighter jets and runways, the deck hides a vast network of tanks, sensors, and control rooms dedicated entirely to raising fish. The ship stretches 154 meters in length, 44 meters wide, and 24 meters deep, a steel giant capable of holding 80,000 cubic meters of seawater, roughly 32 Olympic swimming pools of living space for fish. Inside, there are 12 massive breeding cabins, each functioning like a high-tech aquarium on an industrial scale. These cabins are equipped with an advanced water exchange system that replaces seawater up to 16 times a day, keeping oxygen levels high and waste low. Fresh seawater is drawn from 100 meters below the surface, where it's cleaner and cooler, and then filtered before being circulated through the cabins. Unlike normal fishing boats, this one doesn't rely on noisy engines that scare fish or pollute the water. Instead, it uses an electric propulsion system which keeps onboard noise under 60 decibels, quieter than a normal conversation, crucial for species like the yellow croaker, which are extremely sensitive to sound. But the real magic is in its automation. Nearly every process, from feeding and oxygen control to waste removal and harvesting, is managed by intelligent systems. Over 2,000 high-precision sensors constantly monitor temperature, water flow, and even the facial features of individual fish. If one group grows slower or shows signs of stress, the AI system can detect it and adjust feeding or water conditions automatically. Despite being the size of a warship, the vessel only needs about 35 crew members to run everything. Each person oversees more than 200 tons of fish per year, thanks to the ship's robotic feeders, automated nets, and onboard processing and freezing units. In other words, this ship isn't just a fish farm. It's a mobile seafood factory, capable of producing thousands of tons of fresh, high-quality fish without ever docking at a port. Now that we've seen what this ship looks like, let's explore what's happening inside those vast tanks, the science that makes it possible to raise sensitive species in a moving artificial ocean. The main species farmed on John Jang Bay No. 1 is the big yellow croaker, one of China's most prized fish. It's famous for its tender texture and rich flavor, but it's also notoriously fragile. Yellow croakers are picky about everything, temperature, noise, and water quality. In the wild, they only thrive where the sea is cool, calm, and clean. That makes them difficult and expensive to raise using traditional methods. To solve this, engineers recreated the croaker's perfect habitat inside the ship. Each tank maintains a steady temperature between 12 and 16 degrees Celsius, the fish's ideal comfort zone. A rotating flow field mimics the gentle current of the open sea, keeping water moving at 0.2 to 0.4 meters per second, enough to make the fish swim naturally and stay strong without exhausting them. Fresh seawater from 100 meters deep, where sunlight doesn't reach and pollution is minimal, is constantly pumped into the tanks. This deep water is rich in oxygen and minerals, helping the fish grow faster and healthier. To prevent stress, the electropulsion system ensures noise never exceeds 60 decibels, far below the 150 decibel limit that would harm or frighten yellow croakers. The result is astonishing. Even though the fish are raised in an enclosed space, their survival rate exceeds 95%, and their meat quality is said to rival wild-caught fish. What's more, the controlled environment shortens the breeding cycle by about one-third, meaning the ship can complete two full farming cycles per year instead of one. Every step, from feeding to monitoring, is guided by sensors and AI software that tracks growth patterns. Think of it like a Fitbit for fish. It knows when they're hungry, how active they are, and whether their environment feels off. If the system detects a temperature spike or oxygen drop, it can automatically adjust the conditions within seconds. In short, the ship doesn't just raise fish, 
It engineers an ecosystem. It's really a blend of biology, robotics, and ocean science working together to produce seafood more efficiently, more safely, and perhaps more sustainably than ever before. All this high-tech innovation wouldn't mean much if it weren't practical or profitable. And that's exactly what makes John Jang Bay number one even more impressive. It's not just a science experiment, it's designed as a new model of industrial seafood production that could transform how the world farms fish. Let's talk numbers. With its automated systems and massive breeding capacity, the ship can produce around 7,800 to 8,000 tons of seafood per year, all managed by just 35 crew members. Each crew member effectively oversees more than 200 tons of fish annually, something no traditional fish farm could ever match. That level of productivity slashes labor costs while maintaining consistent quality. And it's not just about efficiency, because the ship handles everything on board, from feeding and harvesting to processing and freezing. It reduces waste and spoilage. Fish can go directly from the water to cold storage within minutes, preserving freshness and boosting market value. According to projections, the ship's annual output could generate over $40 million in revenue with a net profit estimated at more than $8 million after expenses. This single vessel is also paving the way for a new industry fleet. Chinese companies have already announced plans to construct six additional large-scale aquaculture ships, each capable of producing a similar volume of seafood. Over the next decade, the country aims to expand to 50 deep-sea aquaculture vessels, collectively producing up to 400,000 tons of marine fish per year. That's enough to feed millions of people. And it could stabilize seafood supply even when coastal farming is disrupted by pollution or natural disasters. Of course, building ships of this size and sophistication doesn't come cheap. Each one costs hundreds of millions of dollars to design, equip, and launch. But the long-term benefits are clear, steady production, better quality control, and the ability to adapt to changing ocean conditions. Unlike traditional farms fixed in one spot, a fleet of floating fish factories could literally chase the perfect water around the globe. In short, this isn't just about farming fish. It's about industrializing the ocean in a way that promises both profit and food security. Yet as ambitious as it sounds, it also raises big questions about sustainability and environmental impact. Questions that go far beyond economics. While the John Jang Bay No. 1 shows what technology can achieve, it also sparks an important global debate. Can we truly farm the oceans without harming them? China isn't the only country chasing this dream. Norway, for example, has been developing deep-sea aquaculture since the 1990s. Its farms float far offshore, using cold, clean waters to raise salmon with minimal impact on coastal ecosystems. Nations like Sweden and the United States are also experimenting with underwater cages and robotic feeding systems. In many ways, China's new ship represents the next stage of that same global movement taking fish farming from fixed locations to fully mobile, data-driven platforms. The environmental benefits could be huge. By moving farming into deeper, less polluted waters, these ships can relieve pressure on crowded coastlines and help restore marine habitats near shore. Their closed-loop water systems reduce waste discharge, and their mobility allows them to avoid red tides, typhoons, and other natural disasters that often devastate coastal farms. But there are also valid concerns. Critics worry that scaling up these ocean mega farms might create new problems, from fuel emissions and energy use to the risk of disease spreading if farmed fish ever escape. Feeding thousands of fish at sea also raises questions about where the feed itself comes from and how sustainable it is. And then there's the human side. Traditional fishermen may find it hard to compete with such highly automated systems, forcing entire communities to adapt or fade. In short, the John Jang Bay No. 1 isn't just a technological milestone. It's a mirror reflecting our future relationship with the ocean. It challenges us to ask whether innovation can truly coexist with sustainability and how countries will balance progress with protection. 
As this story comes full circle, it's clear that John Jang Bay No. 1 is more than just a ship. It's a symbol of how far human innovation can push the boundaries of nature. What began as an idea dismissed as impossible has now become a real functioning model of the future of food. China's engineers have taken the concept of a traditional fish farm and turned it into something entirely new. A mobile ocean factory that can sail to the cleanest waters, raise high-value fish year-round, and bring them directly to market with minimal waste. It's a bold step toward solving one of humanity's oldest challenges. How to feed billions of people without exhausting the planet. If projects like this succeed, we might one day see fleets of floating aquaculture vessels scattered across the world's oceans, each one producing healthy, traceable seafood while reducing the strain on coastal ecosystems. Together, they could form what China calls a blue granary, a vast, sustainable food reserve built upon the sea itself. Of course, this vision won't come without questions. We'll need to watch closely how these systems affect marine life, energy use, and global trade. Will they truly make seafood production cleaner and more sustainable? Or will they create new dependencies on large-scale technology? The answers will shape not only China's future, but also the global seafood industry for decades to come. One thing is certain. The ocean is no longer just a place we fish from. It's becoming a place we farm within. And if the John Jang Bay No. 1 is any indication, the next generation of food might not come from land at all. If you found this story fascinating, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Because the world's next food revolution might already be setting sail.